for me anyway, so whenever you're ready, feel free. Um, of course, um, looking at the then and now of Eddie Giles, and of course, what inspired me to, let's say, to get into music um, as a young lad, singing in the church choir, and then from there, singing with a male chorus at the various schools that I attended. I've always loved music, but singing music and just making harmony with your voice, I wanted an instrument or wanted to learn to play an instrument that uh, would help the voice. And of course, um, my thing was the guitar, and, and 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 watching those who were out there at that time, um, uh, Elvis Presley and um, Chuck Berry guys like that. In fact, I love really all kind of music, but I love guitar music. It's a string instrument, and I've always wanted to play a string instrument. So um, after teaching myself to play the guitar, then uh, something that I never seen any of my other friends do, or as I said uh, some time ago, guitar players was not plentiful at that time. And to me, to learn to play the guitar was really something. I mean, there were even um, uh, music like, the, let's say, the hillbilly music or jazz music, or just music period. I just love music, and then I love the sound of the guitar, especially after I learned to make three true chords. And that was a time, uh, that, was, that was something that wasn't easy to do, me learning to play the guitar. So after I um, learned that, then my ear got tuned to, uh, especially uh, singing in the key of G. Um, I'm sorry, in the key of uh, C. And of course, those other two chords that I mentioned, F and G, and it was an inspiration to me. Now, music, as they say, makes the world go round. It's a funny thing how music, no matter what language you are singing in, the instrument playing is the same. And I don't think nobody ever thought that. In fact, let me just say, uh, the same chords that it takes to play uh, Sweet Sixteen by B.B. King is some of the same chords he used as playing Amazing Grace. And my thing uh, after being on both sides of the fence uh, is that the blues tell you what condition you're in and the gospel tells you how to get out. Um, so this came later years after me coming out of the uh, circular world into the gospel side of it. And of course I had been in the gospel side, but again, not really deep or long enough to really just uh, really appreciate or to stay there. So then I gave up gospel and then said, well, I'm gonna do R&B. And that's what I did. And then of course, after doing that for some 10 years then, uh, and had been baptized in the church where I used to sing in the choir. And the average uh, singer who sang the blues have somewhere down the line started out singing in the church choir. Uh, I recall when I was uh, traveling with the group of the Pilgrim Jubilee out of Chicago, we also went to Detroit and that's where uh, Dr. C.L. Franklin, uh, his hometown, he passed the church there. And of course, I met Aretha Franklin and her sister. And Aretha was just a little girl in, crawling up on the piano, you know, playing and singing, you know, uh, for her dad. And then later, after we came back to the South, then Aretha all of a sudden um, started her thing. I mean, she got popular singing uh, R&B, but she started in the church. and. Of course, Aretha Franklin respect and my losing boy was out running neck and neck. 
and they had what they call, you know, the charts of where they would chart music according to the sale. And a lot of places, her respect was number one, and my losing ball was number two. In some places, it was vice versa. In other words, my losing ball was number one, and her respect was number two. So losing ball was just that popular. Uh, I recall when it was, uh, when it hit Dallas, Texas, it stayed number one six weeks before it started coming down the chart. And uh, Texas, we played all over Texas. So music is something that people enjoy. Uh, may it be uh, hillbilly, may it be jazz, may it be uh, R&B or gospel. Uh, music does something for relaxation, I would say. And I love music. I, Sometimes I just uh, sit around now and uh, I still write uh, songs and whatnot. I haven't been in the studio to do any recording uh, lately, but I still write. And um, in fact, to be honest, um, what was that, the year of, uh, well, the year that our current president, Barack Obama, uh, began to run to become president. I didn't know him. And I was in Chicago for a benefit program for Clay Graham of the Jews who uh, had one of his long removed. But it was, I was there for uh, a program. And going there, the hotel where I stayed was a tall hotel way up downtown. You could look out and see Lake Michigan and all that stuff. But um, to make a long story short about that, I was on the 44th floor. And uh, I had came out of the bathroom, and it was like the 19th of January of that year. And when I came out of the bathroom, it was like the 20th, January the 20th. And this particular program came on, and this young man came out, and he spoke. And I just um, lie there in the bed listening to him. And after listening to him, I say, that's our next president. That's what I said. Didn't know anything about him. Then I decided to make notes of everything that he uh, was saying. And in doing that, I titled it Our Next President. Well, today, you can go on uh, the uh, YouTube. You can type in Barack Obama song by Eddie Giles, and I'll come up and sing the song that I wrote then uh, about our president. And uh, I think the last time I noticed it, it had been uh, reviewed almost 3,000 times. So when I hear a story or when it's something that I feel that's strong and I need to write about it, I write. And that's why I say I even still write now. I keep my little grandson acoustic guitar with me at all times and make sure I can see what key I'm in, and see what chord changes I'm making. And then when I do get some time to spend on the guitar, with the guitar, I would sit down and just mess around until I come up with um, some type of a structure or arrangement that it would be a verse or the bridge, what we call the bridge, it's the chorus, and make it a song. And uh, most songs is no more than two and a half, maybe three minutes or three and a half because you don't want to make them too long because that takes up a lot of air time and then you won't get a lot of play. But uh, music has always been my thing uh, in, in life and I, I just love music, um, period. Um, 